of Jesus and all that he done for me. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on, worship the God of this world, this universe. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. I shouldn't have to tell you this morning to lift up the name of Jesus this morning. He got out the grave for you and for me this morning. Salvation. Salvation is free this morning. Come on, my sisters and brothers. Come on, minister Wells. Come on, let's lift name of Jesus this morning. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave this morning. I could have been laying in a hospital this morning. Or the doctor could have walked away from me and said, I don't have much time to live. That's why every time I have an opportunity, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, my sister. It's good to see you this morning. But by the grace of God this morning, that I am, that I am this morning. He woke me up this morning. It wasn't a long clock. It wasn't Pastor Arby that woke me up. It was God this morning. Raised me out the bed. I was able to get on my knees and say thank you Jesus just for one more day. Oh, I thank you Jesus this morning because when I think about the goodness of Jesus, Sister Hazel, what all he done for me. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say he's worthy to be praised. Somebody say he's worthy to be praised. Now I want somebody to say like you really mean that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on and give him a hallelujah. Come on and give him glory. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord like this may be your last time. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Hallelujah. It's so good to see all of you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just uh, uh, so delighted to be here today to witness with you. For those of us who have not seen him, but yet though all of us who have not seen him, yet we believe that he lives. Amen. Yet we believe. We have not seen him. We have not seen the Lord. We don't know if he's, if he's a, 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 a black, white, green, yellow, but we know he lives. Amen. Amen. I, don't know about a, I don't know about a white Jesus or, 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 or like good times. I don't know about black Jesus. I just know Jesus. Somebody help me here. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. He, he's, he's, he's not a God that, 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 that chooses people to bless because of the color of their skin or even the content of their character. Because you could be just as no good as you could be. God will still bless you anyhow because he's that kind of God. And we come to bless his name today. We come to worship him, to honor him, and to glorify him. The time, from the time you walk in this door, amen, through the doors, you ought to realize that you are blessed and highly favored. That God allowed you to wake up this morning in your right mind, 
with the activities of your limb. He come to bless, we come to glorify him. Uh, but uh, I want to bring your attention to the book of St. John, chapter 20. Uh, we will be discussing this, this prophet, this disciple called Thomas. Uh, so if you would turn uh, your Bibles and, and we will preach to you from the book of St. John, chapter 20. Oh. 
Master, we come in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your blessing. You've been, you've been blessing Brother Brown for many years. You've given him long life, and, and he still prays you in song. We thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for blessing this church, blessing the member of, that, of this church, their health and their wealth, Lord. I ask that you continue to do so, Lord. I thank you for them. I thank you that they sit here and listen to this preacher as I preach your word. And I want to do as Jesus did, Lord. Whatever you tell me to do, I want to tell them, Lord. So speak to me and speak to them, Lord. I thank you for the word, my heavenly Father. It may not be what we want to hear, Lord, but it is your word, Lord. It is your prophecy, my heavenly Father. It is your anointed word, Lord. Your approved word, Lord. And Lord, someone said that your word is powerful. Which All we got to do is just preach it and say it. So we stand today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless the hearers. Bless the speaker, Lord. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen. John chapter 20, verse 19. This is what it says, and, and y'all be careful and listen to this word. Then the same day at the evening, beginning the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands, and his side, and they then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said, said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sends ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sin ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, somebody say, but Thomas. One of the 12 called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hand the print of the nail." and put my finger in the print of the nail and thrust my hand in his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, somebody say eight days, again his disciples were within and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thou finger and behold my hands and reach hither thou hand and thrust it in my side and be not faithless, but be believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that are not, that had not seen, yet they have believed. Let the church say amen. amen. Now I ask the Lord for this message, this subject. How can I practically ap apply this story to our lives today? And the word came back to me, what happened when you miss church? What happens when you miss church? 
I want you to notice verse 19, and, I, and if I teach, that's because I'm sitting down. I want you to notice verse 19. It says, the first day of the week. The Christian Sabbath, it says, first day of the week. On the first day of the week, that is the Christian Sabbath. That is our Sunday. And I want you to notice something about that. They were having church. But the doors were closed. And the doors were locked for fear. Amen. They had got together. To, they got together and Jesus appeared in the, into the service. Now watch this. The first day of the week, Sunday morning, Sunday. Help me somebody. The disciples were gathered. That's the church. And the preacher showed up. But the preacher didn't come through the doors because the doors were locked. He appeared in the church house. Amen, somebody? And he spoke unto them. Hallelujah. And he said unto them, peace be still. That's verse 19. If you look at verse 26, there is something else that I want you to notice. I told my wife I was going to get a, a calendar and I want you to count it for yourself. Verse 26 is the next Sunday because the Bible says it was eight days later. And I, 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 a young brother Welch, I told my wife, I said, is that, is that seven days or eight days? It is eight days. If you count from Sunday to Sunday, that's eight days, not seven days. Because I told her, if you stop at seven, you stop on a Saturday, and that is the Jewish Sabbath. But the Christian Sabbath is Sunday morning. It proves to us why we worship on Sunday morning, because it was the first day of the week. Something else, Sister Nigel, you didn't notice that it was Sunday evening. Why Sunday evening? Because something else happened Sunday morning. Somebody help me here. Y'all didn't catch that. You missed your shout right here. The Bible says it was early Sunday morning that Jesus got up. Help me somebody. So he was busy getting up on Sunday morning, so they had church Sunday evening. When the preacher showed up, somebody help me here. And watch what the Bible says. Help me now. It says, and Thomas was not there. And I said to my wife, I said, what, was, what could he have been doing when, when he should have been at church? Somebody help me here. The disciples were gathered after the crucifixion. They were afraid. They were trying to make sense of what just had happened. They were reeling with trauma. They, they, they were staying safe behind closed door. And the resurrected Savior appeared in their midst and had the audacity to say, peace be unto you. Somebody help me here. Well, watch this now. They, they were messed up. They were tore up. They were afraid, but they was in church. Somebody help me here. They came to church to be restored. They came to church to be relieved, to be relieved of their fears, to be relieved of their troubles. They were in church, but Thomas was not there. Somebody help me here. Jesus walked into the church, helped me somebody, and the subject he had was peace be unto you. So I don't want to say this, the first thing that you miss when you miss church, you miss the peace of Jesus Christ. Somebody help me here. Somebody help me here. He said, peace be unto you. So when you miss church, you miss your peace. Somebody help me here. You miss your blessing when you miss church. You miss the peace of Jesus Christ. And if there is anybody in here said they don't need peace, something wrong with you. Somebody help me here. I need peace in my home. I need peace on my job. I need peace when I'm by myself. Because there are times when I cannot find peace with myself. Because I can get so crazy sometimes that I can't even have peace with myself. I can get so depressed sometimes I cannot find peace. I can be so troubled that I cannot have peace. You miss peace when you miss the church. Somebody help me here. But let, me, let me back up. This number point, number one, I want you to notice something that we talk about Thomas. To throw a note in there, we call him Doubting Thomas. One preacher says that he disagreed with that because you got to know something about Thomas. Thomas was a bold disciple. 
Can I remind you when Jesus said Lazarus was sick, that I must go see about Lazarus. It was Thomas who said, come on, let's go die with him. Now, how many of them you think was there that wanted to die? But Thomas said, let's go die with him. He was bold and courageous. It was not doubting Thomas. There was another time that he said to him when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And Thomas said to him, Master, show us the way. So not only was he bold and courageous, help me somebody, but he was questioning the Savior because he did not know the way. So I want us to stop calling Thomas Doubting Thomas. It's just a name that somebody gave him. And you got to be careful about giving people a name that don't, does, does not belong to them. You which you know good self. Now you don't know you don't know about that person. Don't labor people. Help me somebody. Especially don't put that curse on a child. You gonna grow up and won't be nothing. Somebody help me here. I read about a young man didn't didn't start talking until he was 11 years old and, 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 and really didn't learn how to read and write until he was 17 or 18 years old, but just became the youngest professor, help me somebody, at one of the most prestigious universities in America. So we don't labor people, tell them they won't be nothing. You're not God. You cannot determine their destination. Somebody help me here? And you better be careful. You continue to tell them they know good, call them by that name. They're going to grow up and live by that name. Somebody help me. The second thing you need to know, what you lose when you miss church. The Bible says not only that, that Jesus blessed them with peace, but he blessed them with his presence. The Lord is in the house. Somebody help me here. The Lord Jesus is in the house. When Jesus appears in the house, there's his presence is in the house. Pastor, how could his presence be there when he is not here? Well, the Holy Ghost is the presence of Jesus Christ. Somebody help me here. When Jesus, help me y'all, when the Spirit of God is here, Jesus is here. A matter of fact, when you hear, Jesus is here because you ought to have Jesus in your life. Somebody help me here. Let me tell you something. If you know him in the pardon of your sin, if he lives in your life, help me somebody. If you walk with him, if you talk with him, baby, when you walk in a room, help me y'all, there is power in that room. Somebody help me here. Let me tell you something. You can be so powerful with the presence of Jesus that when you walk in the room, there is healing that just walk in the room. You, 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 you don't want to shout. There are times when you're sitting in the house of the Lord and somebody walk in, you, don't, you didn't see them, but the atmosphere changed. That's because there is power because that person brings in the power of Jesus. You, you don't believe me? The prayer of the righteous availing much. Somebody help me here. Ain't God all right? My sister laid hand on me. I said, Lord, you said the prayer of the righteous. And I know my sister live a righteous life. So I've been blessed because she laid hands on me. There is power with the presence of the Lord. And when you got Jesus, you got power. And when you got power, you can make it through anything. So when you got the presence of Jesus in your life, somebody help me here, fear had gripped the church. But when Jesus came in, oh Lord, I feel like shouting right now. Fear got to go. Help me somebody. Trouble got to go. The devil got to go. He just got to flee because Jesus just walked in the room. Somebody help me here. It was quiet. Help me, y'all. It was quiet in the room until Jesus showed up and blessed them with peace. It was quiet. And then the Bible said, number three, there was some noise because the disciples was glad. Thirdly, when you miss church, you miss out on the joy of life. Somebody help me here. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, and the disciples were glad. 
when Jesus blessed them with his presence and with his peace. Somebody help y'all, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. There is joy in serving the Lord. There is joy in praising God. There is joy in saying hallelujah. There is joy in the name of Jesus. Somebody help me here. If you keep saying Jesus, something got to happen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hate got to go. Sadness got to go. Because there is joy. And somebody going to testify this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Help me, somebody. And the world can't take it away. Can't take it away because I didn't miss church. Somebody help me here. Number four, when you are in church, there is proof that Jesus is alive. What you mean, preacher? I don't know about you. I didn't come here to worship a dead God. Somebody help me here. Because a dead God can't help me. Ain't God all right? Did, it, did it not the angel tell the Mary, what, who did you come to see? Help, ain't God all right? You didn't come here to see a dead Jesus. Ain't God all right? I come to see live Jesus. Ain't God all right? Say yeah. Ain't God all right? I come to worship a lot. Jesus. I can't walk around with my head hanging down. I'm not dead because the Lord lives, y'all. Ain't God, I feel like preaching up in here. I'm, I'm just about to jump out of this seat. Ain't God all right? Because when I think about that he's alive, Sister Matthew, there is something that goes through my body. Something that runs through my body. It's power in my legs. Ain't God all right? I feel like running when I can't even walk. Ain't God all right? Because I got proof that he's alive. How do I know he lives? Because he lives in me. Ain't God all right? If you don't think he alive, just watch me for a little while. Ain't God all right? When I cry, he drives my tears away. Ain't God all right when my heart is broken he mends my broken heart ain't God all right be careful preacher don't stomp the bad leg ain't God all right somebody help me here there is power because the Lord lives I need some witness up in here ain't God all right somebody help me here that was number four I gotta stand up on number five ain't God all right when you come to church, God will give you a double blessing. Ain't God all right? Peace be unto you. That's the first blessing. Hallelujah. And then he came back. He said, peace be unto you. That's a double blessing. Anybody in here wants a double anointing? Anybody in here wants a double blessing? Prosperity wise, health wise, when you miss church, you miss a double a blessing. I don't know about you, but I want to receive a double blessing. Ain't God all right? I'm closing now, but the last blessing, hallelujah, ain't God all right? Say yeah. Jesus said, hallelujah, after I bless you two times, ain't God all right? Put joy in your life. Somebody help me here. Make your happy. Ain't God all right? I'm not finished, y'all. The Bible says he breathed on them. Hallelujah. Receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. If you're saved, you got the Holy Ghost. There is something about the Holy Ghost. Jeremiah said it feels like fire. I want some fire people up in here. That's filled with the Holy Ghost. I need somebody up in here that got fire burning in you. Fire that when you want to do wrong, make you do right. Fire 
that make you shout fire that make you cry sometimes fire that make you tremble in church I said fire that make you run around the church I said fire that make you rebuke the devil I'm talking about fire I'm talking about the Holy Ghost and God all right The last blessing, Jesus said, bless you, Thomas. You saw my hand. You saw my side. But blessed be the one who believe without seeing. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you are blessed and highly favored. I said, come on, y'all. I want you to bless somebody. You are blessed. Because you in the house, you can't see Jesus. I want you to bless somebody like you never blessed them before. You are blessed and highly favored. Say yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. my grave but the Lord or do not want to miss church no more even if I just come peep my head in I don't want to miss that double blessing I don't want to lose my peace I don't want to lose my joy I don't want to lose the presence of the Lord in my life now that's a promise there I'll never leave you, neither shall I ever forsake you. He promised. The Lord promised you that he would bless you. Matt King Carter, the late Matt King Carter, see, he went to University of Florida, went into a classroom, and the teacher said, over half of y'all gonna flunk this course. You're gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna flunk this course. You're not gonna make it. He said, uh, he said, I got, two A, I got two A's, one B, and three C's. And Mac, uh, Mac King Carter said, he stayed in the class. He said, the professor walked up to him. He said, why you didn't leave? He said, well, professor, you say you got two A's. He said, one of those A's is mine. That's why I didn't leave. Because you promised there was going to be two A's. I say this to say that God promised you that he would bless you. So why would you leave? 